Yo, welcome back to Baller Central YouTube channel. It is your boy Phil. This is the podcast channel. So if you're watching, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like and comment down below. Uh, your reaction to this um, trade between the Wizards, Grizzlies, and Celtics, because this is what the video is about. My reaction to a very, very tough trade for me. This is a tough video to make because, you know, my guy, Mike Smart, is no longer a Celtic. But this is get something in return. Picks, kick, Christoph Porzingis, and etc. So we're going to talk about that. Um, also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and put notifications so we know we upload. We also have a gaming channel where we, up, where we upload video games, video game content like Madden, 2K, MLB, WWE, etc. and more. So also tune into that. So, hey, we are here because last night, I'm recording this on the day after the trade happened. Uh, the Celtics, Wizards, and uh, Grizzlies made a three-team trade after uh, the Clippers, Wizards, and Celtics failed to make a trade. So this is the trade right here. Originally, it's supposed to be Brogdon being shipped up, but as you can see here, basically Celtics got Kristaps Porzingis, the number 25 pick in this year's draft, and Nick in the first-round pick uh, for the draft next year from the Wizards. The Wizards get Marcus Smart. Uh, the Wizards get Tyus Jones. I mean, they have a lot of point guards already, so why not? Danilo Gallinari, uh, towards ACL last year, did he get to play for the Celtics, even though he's long. He wanted to play for the Celtics. Mike Muscala, who got who the Celtics got at the trade deadline, I believe, in the Celtics number thirty-five pick overall, so their second rounder. So just breaking this down team by team. I mean, the Wizards. Very confusing move. I mean, yes, you get rid of Kristoff Brzingis to save some draft, save some um, capital via cap space, but <clears throat> you traded Beal, Brzingis, and all this, and you get you you only show for it uh, Chris Paul, which well, you'll probably let go, you know, free up some cap space, but you you got no first round picks for the future. Basically, yeah, they some some could say you waited too long to rebuild. You held you held up the Brad Beal too long, Perzegas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Kuzma, so Kuzma probably out the door as well. So, yeah, it's gonna be a very very tough rebuild. I mean, they have a lot of they have what over 120 million dollars in cash based next year and possibly a good first round pick. So, we'll see how that turns out. But very very confusing move by Washington. And as for the Grizzlies, they lose Tyus Jones, but they gain a tough, very tough and much beloved point guard from Boston. And Marcus Smart, he may he may not be the best offensively, but he's going to give you great defense, and he could be the heart and soul of the team like he was for the Celtics. So you're getting a lot of grit, which fits in the Grizzlies perfect. They're a very gritty team. I think Marcus Smart has that grit. And for the Celtics, Kristaps uh, Porzingis, you know, uh, he averaged, what, 20 points per game last year, eight rebounds, and 1.5 blocks per game. So the Celtics get a very, very good big. This is probably the best big they had in a while. So shout out Chris Tops. Uh They get a 20-point-per-game score to go alongside Jalen Brown as, as of right now. So we don't know if Jalen Brown is officially on the team or not. He might be traded. He might get a super super max. Who knows? But also, Celtics get a, a first-round pick in next year's draft, and they get a better pick in this year's draft because this year they had a 35 pick, but they upgraded to the 25 to 25th pick. So they move up 10 spots. So. The Celtics got a W here with this trade, despite, you know, losing the hardest holder team. They get Przingis and upgraded their big and a, a good score to go with alongside Tatum and Brown, which they very well needed. Uh, the 25th pick, who knows, they could, that could be used as a trade. That could be used to grab a good a good player, a death player in the first round, and to get a, a player next year in the draft. I don't know whether it's protected or not, but pretty good draft capital going to the year. So, and we're also here to talk about Marcus Smart. Uh, this is more of a trade uh, breakdown slash thank you, Marcus Smart video. So, also, before we go on to Marcus Smart in general, uh, Danilo Gallinari, it's tough that he was he grew up a Celtics fan. He always wanted to play for the Celtics, but uh, last year he wasn't able to play for them because he got signed with them last year, tore his ACL, missed the entire year, and now gets moved before he even gets a shot to play for the Celtics. I mean, the NBA is a business, but sometimes – that, that stuff like that is tough. So I wish Gallinari the best on the Wizards. I don't know if you want to stay there. It's up to you. But hopefully you end your career the way you want to, not on other people's terms. So good luck with that. 
So, hey, let's get into it. Marcus Smart. Reason why I'm wearing this jersey right here, this Marcus Smart jersey. Shout out to my best friend, Hannah Lavin, for getting into this. Uh, he is no longer Celtic. As you can see on the Twitter message slash graphic, he is a Grizzly now. He was involved in that Kristaps Porzingis trade. So, yeah, it was a gut punch. He said it. I mean, he said it in reports. <laughs> Sorry, my nose. Yeah, no, he wasn't expected to get traded. Um, he wanted to retire or something, et cetera, et cetera. But it's crazy. Uh, I'm still a little heartbroken about this, to be honest, because, you know, Marcus Smart has always been one of my favorite Celtics um, throughout his career. He was the longest tenured Celtic until now. He was there through uh, the KG, Paul Pierce era, Ray Allen era. He was there through the Isaiah Thomas. He was there through the struggling era when we were uh, tanking. So he's been through a lot. He's been through so many eras, and he's been a reliable defender, a reliable leader when we needed it. Heart and soul. He was different. He was he won the hustle award. He won the defensive player of the year award. He has accolades. So it's tough to see him go. He's, he was one of my favorites of all, Celtics of all time. Not gonna lie to you. Just because I love the way he played defense, put his heart out on the floor every single game for the Celtics, whether it's a regular season game, all well, not all now for weekend, but also in the playoffs. He always put his heart out there. He was definitely a fan favorite and beloved by everyone in Boston. But it's tough to see him go. Uh, here are some of his longtime stats with the Celtics. Right here. As you can see, before I pull this up, uh, -da -da. as you can see right here, this is tough. Obviously, he wasn't the greatest offensive talent we had as, in a point guard, but 10 points, around 10 points per game, 4.6 assists. As I said, he was more a defensive player than an offensive player. 1.6 steals per game. He won Defensive Player of the Year last year. He was top three in points, assists, steals, and steals. Sorry, and three pointers for the Celtics since being drafted in 2014. He's been there for that long. He's been there for nine years, almost ten years as a Celtic. I mean, we saw people like Al Horford go, Isaiah Thomas go, Avery Bradley. List goes on and on. He's been here more than any of them. So hey, it's tough. I mean, obviously, there's some um, negatives and there's some pro and cons when it comes to Marcus Smart. Obviously, uh, he was he was a streaky three point shooter. He took uh, yeah, just he was he took the most like the third most in the team, but hovered around thirty to thirty five percent between that range. So it was tough. Uh, shot selection could be crazy at times. Yeah, but he's one of the players where you love and hate at the same time, and I mostly love them, but he did have some boneheaded plays like a lot of players do. But, hey, it's tough because in a business like the NBA, you have to make moves like this. Uh, it's either you stick on, you hang on to people that the fans love and adore, or you want to win a championship. And if the Celtics want to win the championship, they have to make moves like this. Marcus Smart, less, yes, he was a beloved fan favorite, but – they they they're trying to win a championship with Tatum and or Brown, and if you want to win, you have to get give them the best roster. They, you have to give them the best roster available so they have a chance to contend. And this was one of the moves you sadly have to make. Um, yes, yeah, since Brogdon was untradeable because of his injury, uh, they had, they needed a big uh, badly. They needed to improve at big. Horford was is getting older. Williams is. Uh, Injury prone and his his bag offensively wasn't as great as you know as Chris Stops per se because five years of, I believe in the league not a lot of offense to him basically a lot threat and that's it not post moves etc cetera, etc cetera. so a, a big was very much needed big depth is much needed and Chris Stops per se is a very good player like I said twenty points per game and you know I read the stats already he is what the Celtics needed in a big. And I'm glad we got him, but you know it's tough to see one of your fan favorites, someone I I love personally watching as a Celtic, growing up, go so. Uh, tough video. It's a tough video to make for me, to be honest. But like I said, Marcus Smart, I just want to thank you for your time, your heart, your hustle, everything you provided for the Boston Celtics throughout your tenure. Uh, I just hope like this is a move. This wasn't. This is a move that helped us help us win a championship. 
because think about it. If, if this was all for nothing, we don't win a championship because of this move. We're they're screwed. I mean, your your goal as an organization for the last three to four years was to win a championship, and you haven't done so yet. So moves like this has to, has to be made. And if you don't, I mean, what what happens to Jason Tatum? What happens to Jalen Brown? You have to. You, I mean, you have to win with these players right now. Not like right now, but like, you know, in the near future because their prime is only for so long and you've made moves that people, you know, look at in the past and judge you for it. Isaiah Thomas being traded, Marcus Smart being traded, some are saying, even though I think – I don't like I don't like the move personally because I, I'm biased because I like Marcus Smart, but it's a move that has to be made because we need to upgrade a talent. So it's just, this is tough. I'm probably saying this in, in a lot of in a lot in this video, so I apologize. But it's tough seeing a fan favorite go. Someone I liked, you know, I, as you can see by the um, by my uh, little name tag or name placement here. If you see it, before I move on, oh, the smartest of Marcuses. That's what I have, but it's not showing up on here. But okay, so yeah, smartest of Marcuses. Uh, he had very clutch moments. I mean, Twitter probably has all of his clutch moments on there. I think there's, there's a thread of all his best moments as a Celtic. So, yeah, it's tough. Again, sorry. But, yeah, Marcus Smart, before I end the video, basically, just to recap everything, it was a move that had to be made. The Celtics needed to move on. They needed to upgrade a point guard. So, I mean, as of right now, Derek White and Brogdon are still on the roster. So, I don't know if they'll trade one of them for a point guard. It'd be tough to trade Brogdon because of his injury with the elbow tendon or arm tendon in his shooting, uh, shooting arm. So, it'll be tough for that. But they needed to upgrade, and Marcus Smart had to be the sacrificial lens for that upgrade. We, we, get, we, get, big, we get big depth. We get a 20-point score to go along with Brown and Tatum. So, hey, I'm just hoping it turns into a championship because if it doesn't, we traded away a fan favorite for nothing. So, hey, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Marcus Smart, thank you for an amazing nine years in the and for the Celtics. I hope you do great in Memphis. We're going to one hell of a guard, someone who will give their all night in, night out. He'll be a great leader for not only Ja because of the situation, but the Grizzlies as well. They get a tough veteran presence, someone who's not afraid to put his body on the line and uh, not afraid to make the big play, not afraid to – do whatever it takes to win late games and during all times of the games. So always making the right play, whether it's the, the little plays, the big plays, the hustle plays. So with that being said, I just want to say thank you, Marcus Martin. I hope you do well moving on with your career. So with that being said, uh, this has been Phil from Ball Central. Uh, this, this is summer, so we're going to try a lot of different videos, podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. So sit, make sure you say subscribe, put on notifications. Thank you for checking us out. And we're having a lot of new content out. And check out the gaming channel as well. There's some games coming out. It's almost Madden season. It's almost 2K season. And there's a knockoff Jet Set Radio coming out. So stay tuned to that. So with that being said, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and like and comment down below whether you like Marcus Smart as a Celtic or not. And do you think he'll do good in Memphis? Let me know your opinions down below. I wanna. We're here to interact with you guys. Talk to the chat, etc., etc. And... We, we, we love interactions. We love, you know, hearing from you guys, know, knowing your opinions. We, we Jokes. Uh, if you're here to make fun of what, or whatever teams you like, we're, that, we're here for that too. We're here to interact with you guys. So with that being said, make sure you like and comment down below. Subscribe, put notifications so you know we upload. And we'll see you next time on Baller Central. Yeah.